It's a four-page memo sent to the White House back in 2010 from a trusted Harvard professor named David Cutler. Now, he also happened to be a senior health care advisor to the president's campaign. Now, Mr. Cutler predicted the administration would be unsuccessful in implementing Obamacare. Now, the memo, which was obtained by the Washington Post, reads, quote, I am concerned that the personnel and processes that you have in place are not up to the task and that health care reform will be unsuccessful as a result. So clearly the White House ignored this word of caution. Here with reaction to all of this, author, columnist Patrick J. Buchanan, Democratic strategist Steve McMahon. Steve, every indication they knew, their own study pointed out that small businesses 60 some odd percent of Americans would lose their health care. Big businesses, 45 percent. Individuals, 85 percent. They knew in July of 2010, and the president continued to go out there and sell what was nothing but a, an enormous lie to the American people. How do you defend that in light of what we've now discovered? How do you defend this? Well, not surprisingly, Sean, I'm not going to defend everything that the president's campaign did. Um, clearly, the president overstated or misstated or inaccurately stated or what the impact would be on a lot of people, and that's, that, that, that's inexcusable. Wait a minute. So, wait a minute. He, or he lied. In other words, <laughs> his, wait a Sean. minute. The numbers, the numbers show, I can show you page 34,000, whatever the, the Obama reports. They knew. They all knew, Steve. Why the American people lied to like that when everybody well, in government knew? Well, so f first of all, Sean, you presume that they knew, and you you accurately point out the fact that there was some evidence that perhaps someone should have known. So I'm in not going to dispute. In the record, they knew. In the I'm register, dispute, they knew. On page 34,455. Right. But how many people do you think read to page 34,485? Here's the problem with the law, in my opinion. The law actually should have required insurance companies to make these grandfathered policies available. They said that they can, but they didn't say that they must. And if you were, if you and the and, the, and all the good folks who were pointing these problems out were sincere and genuine in your concern for the uninsured, then you would say that let's support Mary Landrieu's fix that requires insurance companies to grandfather everybody in. Because you're right, Sean. If, if it's true that 169 million people could lose their coverage, those people should be 129. Those people should be taken care of, and we should pass a law right now that says. Insurance companies shall, not may, shall extend to those people the policies that they like. That's an easy fix that should be bipartisan, and we shouldn't even be debating it. In fact, Pat Buchanan and I could go to the green room and work this out in five minutes. Couldn't yeah, we, Pat? Patrick Jay? Uh, well, it, it does appear that the administration and the President of the United States, uh, I don't know what his aides told him, but deliberately deceived and misled the American people. And he gave us assurances, or a great many of us, that we can keep our doctor and we can keep our health care plan. And I think his credibility, as well as his competence over this website, have been severely damaged. But let me say this, Sean. If it is true, even a fraction of those 129 million policies, both individual policies and those provided by employers, are going to be invalid and have to be rewritten and replaced, this whole thing is going to collapse. You know, what do you mean by collapse, Pat? Because this is I their think, holy grail. I, I mean, I understand I, Mary look, Landrieu. I think and Democrats, I think here Steve is right. I think Democrats and Republicans are going to say, hold off. We've got to put off the individual mandate. We've got to put off the employer mandate. Until we fix this thing, you can't have 100 million people screaming and hollering that their health care program has been changed without having the program collapse. The politics respond to this. Quite frankly, the Democratic Party in a hellish condition as of the next November, and everybody will be demanding changes. Yeah. Now, it's not just the Washington Post, Steve. The Wall Street Journal pointed out, and this really angers me, because I, why maybe I'm old-fashioned. I expect our government to tell us the truth. They pointed out that the White House aides actually debated Obama going out telling the lie. And they just, they, they erred on the side of continuing to lie. Well, listen, Sean, I haven't seen the report that you're referring to. And if that's the true, then obviously, uh, well, if it's true, obviously it's outrageous. But, and I agree with you that the government should tell the American people the truth all the time. Sometimes, however, the government gets it wrong. You'll remember the Iraq war. We don't have to go into it. But you'll remember that there was some... There was some dissembling and misinformation. I don't want to talk about Bush. I know, Bush is I, out of office five years. Sean, nice try. I don't Sean, want to talk Sean, about Bush. I'm Sean, sick of it. Stop. I know, We've I know debated it ad nauseum. No, no, Sean. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> okay. Let me talk about the 129 million Good. people for one second, okay? 
if in fact it's true, and, and with all due respect, I think I would need more evidence than the Daily Caller and somebody who works the for Wall Heritage. Street but Journal if it's true, or CBS if it's News. True, I'm quoting CBS News. If it's hardly... true, Sean, yeah. then Pat's right. If 129 million people really did lose their coverage, this would collapse under its own weight. I don't believe it's true. And I think what you're going to see is everybody who has, you know, insurance companies are doing what businesses do, which is they're trying to upsell Bait their customers. Switch. Look, well, they're trying to they upsell the customers switch, into a more expensive, the books. better well, Steve, product. Let me ask you a People question, are Steve. Okay, Pat. Let me ask you a question. Look, I mean, you know, maybe the Tea Party had the idea, but is it not now a good idea to kick over the individual mandate to coincide with the employer mandate? There are real problems in this thing to get a fix, at least, on these things so this disaster does not occur in the next couple of months. I, I think, Pat, it's time to fix it. And if you can fix it with a Mary Landrew fix, that's the kind of fix I prefer. If, in fact, anything like 129 million people are going to lose their policies, of course you should suspend those things. I just don't think that we're at that point yet. And I think, I think frankly, we need to give this thing some time right. to work. A lot One of the people more. who are getting, a lot of the people who are getting question, new policies. Steve. Pardon? Right. One more quick question. Why would they do this deliberately, go out and say you can keep your doctor, you can keep your insurance policy, period, I don't know, Pat. when they knew differently? I, I, you know what? I, I can't not explain. Fortunately, I can, I can say I wasn't part of those conversations, so I don't know what happened. Uh, it shouldn't have happened, well, let me and tell you, I'm not going to make excuses One last it. point. You mentioned Mary Landrieu. She's on the record December 22nd, 2009, just before they passed this thing. Individuals who like their coverage, they'll be able to keep their current plan. So it was Mary Landrieu. Sean, that's what everybody, Sean, uh, that's Mary what Landrieu, everybody Mark was Vegich. told. That's what everybody was told, and that's what everybody believed. And that's there, what everybody, if there are people, well, maybe if, if they read the bill before they pass it, we'd be in better position. 34,000 pages. It's just a little nighttime reading. I think Mary Landrieu was sandbagged as well as Steve. Yeah, well. Spieg and, and Gene Shaheen and Mark Pryor and Kay Hagan, they're all a little bit of trouble now, Pat. What do you think? Well, I think, I, you know, okay. I think, they'll, I think they will move very expeditiously to kick this thing over for one year. And they ought to. It's obvious it ought to be taken back to the shop. Sounds like a CYA, Pat, where I come from. What, I, what, what, well, did, what if this happened in the uh, Nixon administration, Patrick J. Buchanan? It did. It well, did. Nix, we had some problems of our own, as you recall. Uh, uh, that was my point. All right.